first date, it's right around the corner. But guess what? You still have plenty of time to DIY that perfect Father's Day gift. Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I am bringing to you a quick, easy, budget-friendly DIY Father's Day gift. And let me just tell you, this is such a versatile gift that it is perfect for every dad those sports loving dads, those NASCAR loving dads, those non-sports loving dads, maybe those dads that like to work in the garage. This is one of those DIYs that you can very easily do to suit that special someone that you're gifting a gift to this Father's Day. And today I'm going to be showing you the gifts that I'm giving to my dad and my brother. This is typically not a holiday that I do a lot of DIYing for, but this DIY, it came to me in my sleep. I was super excited about it and I can't wait to show you. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let's do some DIYing on a budget for this Father's Day. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Plaster of Paris is what you're gonna need for this DIY. This is a dry mix and you're getting four pounds in this carton that you could get at Walmart for just about $5. This stuff is so easy to mix. It really is just two parts of plaster of Paris to one part water. So I'm going with eight cups of plaster of Paris and four cups of water. You're gonna wanna make sure to use cool to cold water, not a warm water, because it is going to speed up the hardening process of your plaster. It already hardens pretty quickly, so it's best just to stay with a cool to cold water. Today's recipe is a double batch of what I usually make. Typically, I do four cups of plaster of Paris to two cups of water for a single tile. But because I'm doing two tiles today, I just decided just to mix it all in one fair swoop and get it done. So that is why I went with the eight cups of plaster of Paris to four cups of water. I'm gonna give this a nice good stir. And like I said, you are gonna to wanna to move on the quicker side, really get that plaster well and incorporated with the water quickly till you have a nice smooth consistency. One of these containers here that have the clasp that actually hold the lid down is what you're gonna need. You can find this at Dollar Tree, best place to get it. We don't need the lid, we're making a tile. Because we're making a tile, we want to line the inside of this container with vegetable oil. Yep, that's what you saw me pouring on the napkin. It's just some good old vegetable oil. Great value to be exact. Once I've got these containers good and lined, I'm going to go ahead and pour my clumpy plaster of Paris into this. Oh my word, it's probably best to line your containers with oil before you mix your plaster because mine started to harden, but it's okay because I am safe enough to get a nice smooth consistency still. I like to tap my containers, get those air bubbles out. I'm gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes before I add mm -hmm, a baseball. This is a baseball that I got at Walmart for about $4. If you've got a special one, maybe you wanna use that or not, probably not if it's special, but because my brother is a baseball lover, always has been, I thought it'd be fun to make him a tile with a baseball. Pretty budget friendly at Walmart. They're only about three or $4. For my dad, I'm going the golf ball route. I also bought a bag of teas. I'm gonna go ahead and place my golf tee. Yeah, that's what it's called, golf tee here at the bottom. Then I'm gonna take the golf ball itself and place it right on top. 
I'm gonna let this dry overnight. Like I said, what's great about this is you put this box back and this is acting as a twofer. You're making a DIY golf tile and your dad is getting a box of golf balls and the tees. Perfect, right? It's a win-win. It's been overnight. My tiles are good and dry. You can see that it easily separates from the plaster itself just by flipping it over, giving it a light press. It's gonna pop right out of this container and that is thanks to the vegetable oil. Look at that, we've got a perfect tile here. For this tile, I'm gonna be adding some bottle magic. Guess what? You can find this at Dollar Tree now in the toy section. For those of you who don't know, model magic, it's an air dry clay. And so it's best if once you take it out of the package, you kind of work it with your hands just a little bit. It'll soften it up. The warmth from your hands really helps, makes it a bit more pliable. Once you've got that clay good and soft, you're good to go ahead and flatten it out using a rolling pin. I like to put it on top of one of Dollar Tree's cutting mats because it really doesn't stick to it. You don't need flour or anything. I'm gonna roll this out and get it as thin as I can and I need it big enough to lay over the top of my tile. Now I did take the golf tee out and the ball because it's gonna be easier to mold this air dry clay to my tile without it versus trying to do it around the golf ball and the tee itself. Once I've gotten that air dry clay large enough to lay over my tile, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mold it to my tile, pressing it against the sides. There in the center, I can just take my fingers and easily cut out the center hole for the ball and the golf tee. I know you all are wondering, why am I putting air dry clay on top of a plaster tile that I just made? Oh, just wait for it. I love that I came up with this in my sleep. I can hardly believe I came up with it myself, but the idea of it, I knew it was gonna work. Okay, so the edges there are easy to just kinda run your finger, press it along the edges of the tile itself to remove the rest of that clay or the excess clay. You can easily flatten out the clay with your finger and really smooth it out, and that is what you wanna do using again the edge of the tile as your guide so you don't have clay that is laying over the sides of your tile. If you're gifting this, you want it to look clean and finished. And this here is what you should be left with. Now, although we want those edges to be clean and finished, don't worry too much about how the top of your tile looks, meaning if it's flat or smooth enough, because I really feel like those imperfections in a tile really give it character. The more imperfect, the more perfect it is. I'm gonna go ahead and replace my golf tee, but I'm not gonna replace the ball. There really was no method to my madness. I, I just felt like I needed to replace the golf tee. Ask me why again, I, I don't know, but I did. Oh, I know why. I remember now, because I wanted the clay to dry around the golf tee, I felt like it would stay in better if the clay dried around the golf tee, but the ball, I could glue it in. That was my mindset. These scissors here by Crafter Square at Dollar Tree are perfect for this next step because they've got the sharp tip. You need these sharp scissors to cut the clay. Now, some are going to ask me, why didn't you just cut the plaster? because you can't really cut the plaster and get the illusion that I'm getting by cutting the clay. And so I really wanted to give the illusion of grass and I knew the easiest way to do that was to add some clay to the top of the tile and to cut it. Once it dries, all of these little cuts are gonna be stiff and hardened and it is going to give Again, that illusion of a golf ball and tea and grass. And that was really, I swear to you, what I saw in my dream when I woke up and knew that I had to create it. And that is kind of how a lot of my DIYs work. I wake up and I'm like really inspired and I get to DIY and whatever it was that I came up with in my sleep. And this one was one that I was super excited about because I was kind of stumped on what I could DIY my dad this year for Father's Day and I really wanted to DIY him a gift and not buy him one and since my dad is an avid golfer and my brother is a huge baseball player I knew that this was the perfect gift to give them this year. 
Okay, seriously, I'm super excited with how this is coming out so far. The golf tee, I wanted it to stand out, so I'm gonna use some of Waverly's Maze. I'd have to say the perfect green, in my opinion, for grass is Waverly's Burn. When painting your tiles, and this goes for any tile, you really do want to make sure that that plaster is good and dry because one, your paint won't dry, and two, it'll stay sticky. I'm gonna say, when you look at this, you get the feeling of grass. Crafter Square has these amazing wood letters. They come 26 in a pack. You can order these online. I just bought a case of them and had them shipped to the store for free. These wood letters are the perfect size for these tiles. Well, they're the perfect size for a lot of DIYs. That's why I ordered a case of them. I've always called my dad Pops. I've never really called him dad or re I refer to him as my dad, but I call him Pops. And so that's what I'm gonna put on this tile for him because it's a personalized tile. I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to place my letters. If I place them over the top, it's just going to say pop, which is really what I call my dad most of the time. Hey pop, how you doing pop? Um, it's mostly when I refer to him that I refer to him as pops. So if I put pops, I need to put it along the side so I can fit four letters there, but I wasn't super excited with how that looked. I felt like the top was too empty, so I decided to just go with pop. How many times can I say that? Let's count. And that way it kind of fills in that empty area there at the top. I'm just using some of this wood glue by Super Glue because it really does work great even if it isn't wood, and I'm just going to adhere it onto my tile just like that. Now, I could have very easily pressed these letters into the clay while they were, or while the clay was still wet. I don't know why I didn't. I feel like the pop was an afterthought, and so if you're going to put something like that on your tile, maybe just press it into the clay while it's still wet, and that way you don't have to go through the step of gluing it in or on, gluing it on. And there we have it. I couldn't be happier with the way this looks and I think my dad is going to love this. For this tile, I'm really excited because I had the vision of sky and grass for the baseball. And so for the sky, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's pool and ocean, kind of give it that streaked look. I'm not super good about drawing clouds, so I just figured I'd keep it simple by kind of doing that blended soft look that I can do with starting out with the base coat of the pool and then lightly going in with some of the ocean and just kind of blending it in. And I'm only gonna do that on three quarters of the tile up there at the top, again, to give the illusion of the sky. So much fun. For the bottom half, guess what? I'm gonna put grass and I am using the leftover clay that I had from my first bag on the bottom half. Now forgive me because the camera shuts off here and I didn't realize it, but really the technique is going to be the same. For this, I thought I was gonna add his full name, Ryan, but decided as I was painting to stop with the two letters, Rye, because that's what I call my brother, is Rye. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and place his letters right on top there above the baseball. Oh, I am loving this. Then I'm gonna go in with the fern green and paint the bottom of this tile, the grass, green. I am so stinking happy with how these tiles turned out and I'm even more excited to give these tiles to my brother and my dad this Father's Day. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Jill Cox who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY rustic candle holders. Jill, I am loving your spin and your twist on this DIY. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. I love making these tiles. They are such an amazing gift to give. And I tell you, I woke up in the middle of the night one night and all I saw was that golf ball in the golf tee and my brother's baseball. And I thought, what a perfect gift to give that dad. If your dad likes NASCAR, 
go to Walmart and Target, buy one of those die cast cars and put it in the tile long ways so half of the car is sticking out, guaranteed that dad is gonna love it. I hope you all enjoyed today's Father's Day DIY gift idea on a budget. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please. And bye for now, everybody.